Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. This is episode two, the long awaited continuation of the series, which I hope is gonna be one of the main pieces of my YouTube journey in the future. This hot take series, each episode addresses a small issue or maybe an unpopular vote in the community. And I like to talk about these things. I like to bring them to the attention of the respective companies. And hopefully the more you support this series, the more videos are made. Episode one talked about the 20th character pack. This legend legendary, highly coveted set, which really should be as readily available as possible. It is basically the best Halo collectible Mega Constructs has ever made, and the release of this was very, very poor. Last year, sold out to bots immediately on Amazon, and pretty much no one got one. I mean, it took me a long time to even get one. I made a video last time, about a month ago, talking about how Mega needs to re-release this. Very recently, Mega announced that they have sent another several thousand to Amazon for distribution. I can't say whether that was a direct influence of my video because these things take a long time and there are a lot of moving parts. I know Mega themselves were not particularly happy with that release, but I would like to think that at least we made some kind of positive impact in getting that set back to Amazon. So episode two, I've been thinking long and hard about what topic I want to cover, what I want Mega to start changing in the future, and this has been something that's been on my mind for a while, right? I've just been in America for the past four months. Before that, I was in China for five years, so I missed out on blind bag series more or less entirely. Before that, I was in England, and back in the golden days of Halo Mega Constructs or Mega Blocks, England was the absolute center of distribution for the whole world, really. You couldn't find better distribution in England apart from maybe America and Mexico. And since then, distribution in the UK has just plummeted. One of my main aims with this series is to bring distribution back to the UK. That's one of my fundamental core goals with this whole video series. Like, I'm very passionate about bringing distribution back to the UK and I actually think it's pretty possible. But in this episode, we're gonna talk about blind bags. Blind bags have been the absolute core of Mega Constructs since 2009, and they have just been releasing every single year for 13 or 14 years. There have been absolutely dozens of them, and today I'm here to talk about something that I kind of feel like is a problem with blind bags now. I feel like blind bags have lost the energy that they used to. The topic of this video or the title of this video is chase figures, but I'm going to talk about a lot more than that. I'm going to talk about the history of blind bags, what they mean to fans, how they've changed over the years, and how I think they've lost touch a little bit. But they're very close to being relevant again. Like, I really believe that Mega are making a lot of the right steps, particularly with the brand new Halo Universe Series 1 blind bags. Mega did confirm recently that in fall of this year, we're gonna get another blind bag series, but it will be Infinite Series 4. And I got no problem with that. I think Mega are now going to start doing Halo Universe blind bags every spring, Halo Infinite blind bags every fall. That might be wrong, but that's clearly what they're doing right now. There's nothing wrong with that. I kind of felt like the point of Universe blind bags was that we were going to get two blind bag series every six months. So Mega releases in spring and fall seasons. That's how they operate. And I thought we were gonna end up getting Infinite and Universe every spring and every fall. Maybe not the case just yet, but then again, you can't really jump to any kind of conclusions. When we're talking about the USA, I don't like that people are complaining about distribution because there are global shipping demands from uh, a certain pandemic that has made shipping very, very difficult. So I think we really do need to hold on with that. We need to just be patient with Mega. They have expressed recently that they're trying to bring distribution back to the UK, but it is a challenge. I'm gonna help with that one, I hope. But today we're gonna talk about blind bags, right? There have been so many, 26 core blind bag series. And that is a lot of figures. And there have been big pros and cons about each series. Myself and Tower of Ultimate Doom have done a series every Halo Mega Bloks blind bag. We've done part one and part two covering all the way from series one to Foxtrot, and you can check out those links down below. It's a really good watch. We're gonna do part three very soon, bear with me. Essentially, my original experience of Halo Mega Bloks was blind bags. My very first figure, and this is a fun story, my very first figure of Halo Mega Bloks, first of tens of thousands, was a series one blind bag. And I bought it from a store called The Entertainer in England. And once I bought it, 
I opened it and it was the AC figure, the AC Spartan. And I remember being disappointed at the time because I'd never got any of these toys before. And I was like, I don't want to see through one. I want like one of the cool elites or something. Little did I know that's now one of the rarest figures, but still I was very happy with it and from then my collecting absolutely snowballed. Series 1 to 3 of Halo Mega Bloks blind bags were a pretty good stepping off point. They were nothing special because there were barely any molds at the time, so they were basic elites, marines, and spartans, but they still did the job. And each one of them came with an AC figure. A Halo Wars Spartan in Series 1, then a Flame Marine Series 2, and an Elite Series 3. And then when Series 4 came around, we got what I would argue is the greatest Mega Bloks blind bags bag figure ever, it's Cortana. The Cortana from series four was so legendary at the time. And I remember hunting that across the UK. It was so exciting. To have a named character in your Halo Mega Bloks army was a really wild ride. And that data chip she came with as well was phenomenal. But then things started to take an interesting turn. In series five, we got rumors across the internet. They were only bare speculation that there was some kind of additional chase figure. And on the packaging of series one, two, and three, there was a figure in the middle with a question mark that was never actually actually in the set each time. So it did always lead to speculation of like, is there a mystery figure? Is there a chase figure? And turns out in series four, there was. Series four introduced three Spartans, each with different weapons and each a different color gummy figure. Red, blue, and smoke, smoke being my absolute favorite. And each of these came in random bags and nobody knew where they were from. Nobody knew if they were exclusive to different countries. There were rumors that the red Spartan was only in Mexico. There were rumors that you could get two figures per blind bag. Everyone was going nuts. And I, I always like that kind of, um, that kind of nostalgia with the internet, like nowadays when a game releases, the final boss has been posted to YouTube pretty much instantly. Back in the day, especially like when I used to play Pokemon, you didn't know what Pokemon were exclusive to what game. You didn't know what legendaries were in the game. I remember when I was playing on Pokemon Ruby, and I came across Latios. And it was like the wildest thing in the world. So series five to me started to really get the community engaged. It started to capture our imagination, right? There were these three Spartans. We didn't even know about all three at first. They were slowly appearing on forums and like whatever Facebook was back in the day, like a, a skeleton of what it is now for the best, I think. These Spartans were appearing. It was so exciting, like riveting to know that these random chase figures were out there. Then you had to go to forums. You had to trade with people. I remember I got my red Spartan from Mexico and it was just the greatest hunt. Then series six followed with a purple, blue and lime green elite. They all had the same plasma rifles. They made a gorgeous set. I have a little glass display case at home with all three inside. Like they are a really great collector. And it was the same thing. We didn't know if series six was gonna have chase figures as well. They came out. Everyone was scrambling. How many are there? Where are they? Like, so exciting. You have releases nowadays and they are very exciting. You know, Mega have actually stepped it up massively in the last few months to have releases coordinated with YouTubers and coordinated with special guests. And it has been a way better experience for me personally. But there's still not that mystery. The mystery was actually captured again last year when Mega approached different YouTubers and some Instagrammers who reveal sections of this 20th character pack. I was the first in the world to reveal the Miranda Keys, Sese Refumi, Rates Vedam, and The Prophet. Like, that was so exciting. We were going across Instagram and YouTube like, who has the other pieces? Are these all different sets? Is this all one big set? We had no idea. The same goes for things like New York Toy Fair, which has been canceled two years in a row, though Mega did do a good job with Gabe from G Customs Creator covering the reveals, but New York Toy Fair used to be a really exciting weekend because we'd all sit there, we'd all be refreshing Facebook. When are those set reveals, those blind bag figures gonna come out? Like it was very exciting. That's something that I want Mega to continue to recapture, that excitement. I believe that all sets from Halo Mega Construct should be revealed in a cool way. Mega should be cropping small pieces out of a figure and sending them to different YouTubers or just sending them to random people on Facebook. Like Mega should be revealing everything first and everything should be revealed in a slow drip fed way that is just riveting and exciting. So series five and six had started off with a big high with the chase figures. And then series seven came along. And if you didn't know, series seven was 20 figures. It was absolutely massive. And in that set, it included a blue storm zealot, an orange storm miner, a green Spartan warrior, and a yellow Halo 4 Spartan, all in gummy and all totally random. The normal assumed thing now is that it was one gummy per box, but I know some people who bought entire boxes of some of these series and got no gummy. So we never really knew what the odds were on these things, but they were pretty dang rare. Series eight came out with a smoke zealot, green recruit, and orange watcher. Series nine with a red skin, 
Scout, Yellow Stormgrunt, and a Blue Crawler. That's Series 1 to 9, and Series 9 also included a half AC skirmish. Like, that was just a random one on the packaging, and they still had the chase figures. Then we went on to the Alphabet, Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, Echo Foxtrot, and they all had some pretty wild gummy figures. Alpha Series with the Red Recruit, Purple Jackal, Smoke ODSTs. Bravo with the Red Honor Guard and Blue JFO. We got Charlie with a Smoke Meal and Green Hazard. Delta with a Red Protector and a Blue Elite Ranger. Echo had a Smoke Pilot and a Purple Aviator. And Foxtrot with a Red Elite Ranger and a Stone Chief. And this Stone Chief was probably the craziest of them all. When people see this picture online, they don't even believe it's a real figure. Like the Stone Chief was absolutely legendary. From the Halo 5 Hunt or Be Hunted trailers, it was really dope to get this as a chase figure particularly. And the Stone Chief was the only chase figure that was not gummy. I think I probably have about 80% of them and they were just so exciting. Cause like, here's the thing, when a series is revealed, it's just one picture with all the figures and you're like, okay, I know them all now. And like that kind of takes the excitement away, takes the uh, anticipation away in some ways. Say when Halo Universe Series 1 was revealed, you take a look at those images for months, like you know them like the back of your hand. And then when the series releases, it is very exciting to still get them, don't get me wrong, but it's still like, there's not that extra added element of what's the chase gonna be? Who's gonna find the chase first? It's such a race, especially when there's like, how many? In Series 7, four chase figures? It took months for everybody to find all of them. And that just kept the hype going. Recently, I purchased something very special. This is a factory sealed box of Bravo series. And this may very well be the only one left sealed. I've never heard of someone just having both of these stacked on top of each other. And in this box, I am lucky enough to have one of the chase figures. I don't know which one it is yet. I've purposefully tried to not feel it too much so I don't spoil the surprise. It's either gonna be a red gummy honor guard or a Spartan JFO in blue. And when I purchased this, it recaptured the excitement and made me want to make this hot take video because the second I got hold of this, I grabbed them all out and I quickly search through each one. Because in these series, I don't know exactly which series, it was probably from about series eight or nine onwards to Foxtrot, the gummy figure would be included with another figure. And that's just crazy because the gummy is the best one and you still get an additional figure, it's wild. So I was quickly searching through, trying to feel for that really bulky packet. And at the very end, I found it. And it just made me think back to those days where I'd walk into a supermarket in England or a toy store like Toys R Us. I'd run, see if the box is there, and then search through every blind bag quickly, just feeling for that gummy figure. It was a rush, like it was very exciting. And to feel that really bulky packet meant you were going home with a gummy figure. And that was always just so exciting, man, so exciting. And that's kind of what I want Mega to bring back. The chase figures, I think, are an integral part of Halo blind bags. And I've lost that excitement now. Since I've been in America, Halo Infinite Series 3 and Halo Universe Series 1 blind bags have released. And I found them, very luckily, and I've bought the ones I need and I've stopped. I've been going on a lot of target hunts recently, particularly to find Halo Heroes Series 15. I've been going with Kellen, Thomas and Daniel Bovey. I've been going with Strandy42 on Instagram. There's been a lot of hunting. So you walk into the target, you go to the shelves, and the second you don't see Heroes 15, that's it, you just leave. And it, it is still exciting, but it removes that excitement out of the equation because when I bought all the blind bag figures I need, which I'll probably buy the second I see them, I have no reason to search any more blind bags. And I don't know, that just removes an element of the fun. And I think you would probably agree with me. I don't know the first thing about production costs at Mega. I can't imagine that it's that bad to include a chase figure. We don't even need to talk about like three or four. I'm just talking what? Halo Infinite Series 1, 2, and 3 released, and in those sets, we got an AC Chief, Trailblazer, and Brute Chieftain. The AC Chief was a common figure, so everyone was kind of frustrated that they were getting so many AC Chiefs when they just randomly buy blind bags. Blindly buy blind bags, that's nice. I think it would be way better going forward, particularly with Halo Infinite, if you had eight figures on the packet, and same as you did with the original Halo Mega Bloks blind bags, a little silhouette of a figure with a question mark. And it can actually be the silhouette of the figure Figure you're going to find as a chase figure. It could be one, it could be two, it could be like with series five and six where you have three different colors of the same figure. I don't mind. 
I just want it back. I'm gonna address the main issue, the main argument against this that people have, and that's availability and being able to complete your set. I do agree with you for the most part. It is sometimes difficult to find figures as they are, and some people don't want the stress of additionally having to find chase figures. I think if the chase figure isn't even included on the blind bag series, it shouldn't really be counted as a blind bag series. Figure. It's just a random extra chase figure. It would be even cooler if for say three series in a row If you had a gummy yellow chief orange chief red chief and you had to complete them throughout the series Well throughout three series and it was just a whole different game I don't have some of these figures But I would still consider myself having a complete set of each of these blind bag series I don't need these gummy figures to feel like I've got a complete set But it would just be so much more exciting after series foxtrot finished we lost the gummy figures entirely and sometimes there were gummies, but they were displayed on the packaging. In series Warrior, Maverick, and Challenger, we had a gummy red Atriox, gummy blue Rogue, and gummy green Heliosquare. But they were on the packaging, and when they're on the main packet, they take up one of the figure slots. And I've seen people complaining about this as well. When you have an AC figure on the packaging of Halo Infinite Series 1, 2, and 3, that takes up one of the slots. And that means we get less army building figures, which I think is the main reason people buy blind bags. After that, Stormbound had an AC Honor Guard. Then A New Dawn had a gummy Captain Cutter in blue. Battle for the Ark had an AC Spartan Rogue. Then Infinite Series 1, 2, and 3, it was the AC Chief, Trailblazer, and Chieftain. And then Halo Universe Series 1 had a purple half gummy Spartan Aster, which I did really like. I love half gummy, particularly with those armory packs, those weapon bays. But... I want that as the chase figure. I want that as the unknown. I want that as the exciting build-up. Like, we don't know what it's going to be until the moment those series release. And then everybody's going crazy online trying to figure out what chase figures belong in what series. Ah, oh, man, it's it's really exciting. I, I actually love that. So my message, plain and simple for today, Mega need to reintroduce chase figures into the blind bags. I think it's a must. I think it's a way to keep the audience engaged. I think it's a way to keep hunting an exciting thing that you want to do. The more that Mega encourages people to go hunting at places like Target or Walmart, the more they're likely to just buy Halo Mega Blocks anyway, the more I'm likely to make videos hunting for Halo Mega Blocks. So I would love to hunt for blind bags. I have done minimal hunting for blind bags but again the second I find Halo Universe I'm just gonna buy that one box and then it's over so let me know in the comments down below if you are on board with this what other issues you might have what other concerns you might have and I would love to address them further in the future episode 2 of Mega Community Feedback will be going live very soon and in that episode I'm collating together all the comments from my different videos and discord on what figures you want included in blind bags in the future I would love you to let me know down below if you want to see Chase figures return I would love you to let me know down below what figures you really want in the next Halo Infinite blind bags and the next Halo Universe blind bags. I'll take the best comments, I'll put them into a video probably next week, and if you want to continue this discussion, check out the link to my Discord in the description of this video. Our Discord community is almost at 2,000 members, and we've just completely relaunched it with loads of new features, including hashtag MCX feedback where you can go to that tab and also voice what blind bag figures you want in the future. And also, if you want other blind bags based on a particular Halo game or a particular Halo mission like Clash on the Ring, The New Dawn, and Battle for the Art. So thank you very much for tuning in today, guys. This was another video with The Domain. I hope you really enjoyed episode two of Hot Takes. I really hope this series will start to tackle loads of different issues across communities, particularly loads of issues in the Halo community, and then video games in general. And if I can have the support on Hot Takes and I can start launching other the YouTube channels where I talk to the camera like this and on a green screen. I would love to talk about history, about YouTube, about mental health struggles, like all sorts of different things. I'm not just the Halo guy. I'm a lot more than that. So thank you very much. You have a great day. You stay awesome. You stay safe out there, folks. And Bravo Series is signing off.